Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to share four books that you can use to teach your students about listening. It is currently July when I am filming this video and I'm thinking ahead towards the beginning of the school year. And one of those social emotional skills that students really need to work on is good listening, right? That's one of the first things we teach our students, what listening might look like, what it sounds like, how it feels when you're not being listened to, and just general respect for our community. Now I've made a bunch of picture book suggestion videos in the past. I have a whole playlist that looks like this right here. I have videos over there for all sorts of different social emotional learning skills, as well as picture books for teaching what types of books you should read when teaching personal narratives, like mentor text lists as well. So check out that playlist if you want to see more book suggestions. But in today's video, I have four that I really like for teaching about listening. So if you're ready to hear what they are, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. The first book I want to share with you is actually the book I chose to make lessons around in my K through two writing unit for August. These are my mini lessons that I use and I chose the skill of listening. And this book is called Quiet Please Owen McPhee by Trudy Ludwig. Now that's the same author as The Invisible Boy. So another great, great book. This story is about a little boy named Owen McPhee who just loves to talk, talk, talk. In fact, he talks so much that it really gets in the way of all his listening. He's constantly interrupting others, spoiling things. Um, you know, he just, he talks a lot. And then one day in the book, he wakes up with a bad case of laryngitis, which means he lost his voice and he was just listening. He was kind of forced to have to listen to everybody else because he couldn't speak as much. Throughout this story, he realizes how wonderful it is to actually listen to others and not be the one speaking all the time. So much so that at the end of the book, he decides to schedule himself some laryngitis days where he takes a day off from all his talking. Now, I love this book because in the story, Owen McPhee is just, you know, he's excited about things. He's not a bad kid at all. He's just very excited and he wants to share all his thoughts. But again, he does so by interrupting, spoiling things for others and not really listening to others. So this book does a great job of putting the perspective on those that are not really listened to and what that might be like, how your friends might act if you're constantly talking over them and not really listening to them and not really being a good teammate in group projects that's touched upon in here too, but it has some really great discussion points and discussion questions to ask your kids after you read this story with them. So quiet please, Owen McPhee, great one. The second book I wanna share with you is such a cute one. It is called, I Have a Little Problem, Said the Bear, and this story is by Heinz Janisk. Now this is a sweet story and it really puts you in the perspective of the person who's not being listened to. A lot of the other stories I share um, have the main character being the one who's constantly, you know, doing all the talking. But this one, in this story, the bear is the one where no one is actually listening to him. In this story, the bear has a problem and he goes to all these people to see how they can help. He goes to an inventor, a tailor, a doctor, a street vendor. He tries to tell everybody about his problem, but before he can even say what his problem is, everybody just jumps in and they say, oh, I know your problem, I can fix it. They make all these assumptions and they come up with all these solutions, but nobody actually takes a chance to listen to what Bear's problem really is. He ends up getting exhausted and at the end of the story, he sits down and a little fly comes over to him. And the fly asks him, what's the matter? But Bear says, I don't even wanna talk about it. Nobody listens to me anyway. And that's when the fly really looks at him and says, I'm listening, tell me about your problem. And that's when the bear can actually share his problem and what he's scared of. And together the bear and the fly can come up with a solution. Now, like I said earlier, I love this book because the main character is the bear, the person not being listened to. And a lot of your students can really relate to that feeling of no one's actually listening to me. Um, maybe they have a bunch of older siblings. Maybe they're just a quieter student in general. And some of the more um, assertive students might take over a little too often for them. Maybe your students have tried telling adults and other people about problems and they're just kind of shushed or they're kind of told, you know, yep, I can fix it later and just kind of like move on. Nobody's really listening to them. So the story really gets to share that perspective and help students relate to this character. Story number three I love for teaching all about listening is Wordy Birdie. And this story is written by Tammy Sauer. I think I said that last name correctly. If I did not, I apologize. 
Now in this story, similar to Owen McPhee, Wordy Birdie is a bird who loves to talk, talk, talk. Wordy Birdie shares way too much information. She just keeps talking and talking and talking about whatever pops into her mind. But here in the story, her talking gets in the way of her listening, especially when it comes to danger. She is so busy talking that she doesn't notice the no trespassing signs, and she's not listening to the others who are trying to keep her out of danger. Danger. Thankfully, at the end of the story, her little forest friends help save her, and Wordy Birdie actually shows that she can listen from time to time. This book is another cute one, again, about somebody who's just talking a lot, like Owen McPhee, but here the moral of the story is that when you're talking so much, you can sometimes miss really important directions that can keep you safe. And that is an important skill that we want to teach our youngest students. I know when I'm teaching my own kids at home, sometimes we really need to listen because your mom and dad are trying to keep you safe from doing such things like crossing the street, walking in parking lots, etc. But the same thing goes at school as well. Your teachers are are trying to keep you safe. There's a lot of you. We really need to make sure we are listening to the teacher, especially when they are telling us important directions. And book number four I want to share with you today is My Mouth is a Volcano by Julia Cook. Now, Julia Cook is an author who has a bunch of social emotional learning books. She has one about being a tattletale, one about having ants in your pants and constantly moving around, all sorts of cute books that teach students um, like classroom skills with some clear direction there. And the reason I like this book is I actually don't know if this one specifically talks about listening itself. It more talks about interrupting, but this book gives students a tactic or something to do if they are that Owen McPhee or that wordy birdie. If they're the student that really just wants to talk, 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 and they might interrupt others and they might not be listening and they might, you know, be kind of ruining things for others in a way, this book teaches them what they might do when they feel like their mouth is a volcano. So this story is about a little boy named Lewis who again erupts a lot. He has a lot to say and he kind of goes through this fun story how he feels the words and they just erupt out of his mouth and he just has to share whatever he's saying. But at school that's not really appropriate behavior, right? Students need to be listening to what's going on. They need to give other people a turn. So in this story Lewis ends up finding out that when he has something he feels like he really 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 needs to say and it's not an emergency, then what he can do is he can take a deep breath and push his words out through his nose. That's going to help him wait his turn to talk and then he can breathe the words back into his mouth and share them with others. Lewis practices this skill and realizes that when something is not an emergency, this is a tactic he can use so he's not interrupting others all the time. So this book really touches upon the respect that we need to give others when they are talking, not just in terms of listening, but also not interrupting them. It's not respectful if we don't let others have a chance to say what they're saying. And if we are constantly just interrupting them, are we really listening to them? Not so much. So I like this book because it gives students a tactic and something that they can try to do to stop interrupting others. I've actually used this book for years. It is in my old back to school unit. It looks like this right here and I have this little craft. I'm laughing because I made this craft like in 2013. But you know, it worked and students would share what they would do when they were feeling like their mouth was a volcano. So there are four of my favorite books for teaching your students all about listening. Now, those books can be useful throughout the year at any point in time, really, but especially towards the beginning of the year when we are laying out our directions and what we want our classroom culture to look like, those can be pretty helpful. I would love to know from you if you have other books that you love to use when teaching your students about listening, or if any of these are classroom favorites, let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of all of my new videos. See you in the next one. Bye.